same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's still a chain breaker. He is still a way maker. He wakes, he makes a way in the desert. He makes a way in the wilderness. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Surely goodness and mercy Your 
Give glory to the King today. He is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of our praise.
Church, it's our prayer today that the Lord would bless you, have his favor upon you, and give you peace. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Oh, the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Give you peace. Come on, let's sing amen. Look at somebody and sing. The Lord bless you. Come on, look at someone. The Lord bless you. Come on and keep you. And keep you. Make his face. Make his face shine upon. Come on and be gracious. The Lord. The Lord turn his face toward you. Face toward you. And give you peace. How many of you need peace today? towards heaven. Come on. Jesus.
few minutes on your reward. You labor not in vain. You labor not in vain. Get that in your heart today. God sees and knows everything. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You see, it's easy to forget that this world is not your home. You're going to spend eternity with Christ in a place especially prepared for you. I tell you, I can't wait to see Reinhardt again. Reinhardt Bonkers and those ones that have gone before us. Sorry, my voice is fine. Just I got so emotional with that song. Sure. John 14 verse 2 says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. So when you're absent from your body, you're present with the Lord. Amen. You'll also be rewarded for the job you've done. The Bible not only supports that idea, it spells out some specifics. Here are three things you need to know about today. First of all, your reward will mostly be received in heaven, not on earth. Now Mark 10.30 says, who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time? Houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children and lands with persecution. I can't leave that out. You know, the more God blesses you, the more the devil wants to destroy you. Amen. And the taller the tree grows, the more the wind blows. Amen. That's about 40 years old, that saying. But God reserves special honors for the day when each one's work will become evident and he shall receive a reward. And what a beautiful reward I've received with my family, with the, the church. It's been incredible. The people that have supported us and been behind us is fantastic. In 1 Corinthians 3, verses 13 and 14, each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire. Reinhard always used to preach on the fire, the fire, the fire, the fire. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If on it, he has built on it and endures, he will receive a reward. It's not how you start, it's how we finish. Amen. Amen. And my beautiful wife and me have still got plenty years around. I'm still going to preach now and again, but I know that this is so of God. So blessed with my children and grandchildren. Oh, what a special thing it is. Amen. Rewards will be based on quality, not quantity. We're impressed by size, volume, noise, numbers, but God has his eye on motive. God has his eye on motive. You can always tell somebody's heart by their motives. His rewards are based on what you do with what you have and the heart you put into it. He's an equal opportunity employer when it comes to rewards. Our reward may be postponed, but it'll never be forgotten. Hallelujah. 
when I think of Brother Hagen, think about people that have influenced my life and people that have blessed our lives. I couldn't mention them, take forever. But there's so many people come into your life. Don't miss who God sends into your life, eh, Bussy? We must not miss it. It's a divine appointment most times in your life. And when you've done what was required, yet are ignored and misunderstood, Remember, your labor is not in vain. Say it with me. Your labor, say it again. Amen. And when you have done the right thing and receive neither credit nor acknowledgement, remember, your labor is not in vain, Dot and Bernard. Not in vain. Amen. When you have served, given, sacrificed, and willingly stepped aside in order for God to get all the glory, remember, your labor is not in vain. God sees everything. Amen? Especially the good. (laughs) Right now, while every head is bowed and every eye is closed. I want to give you an opportunity today that if God brought you here by design, by design and divine appointment, if you were to die in the next 24 hours and you have no idea where you would go. God's brought you here on purpose today. Don't let it pass you by. Jesus said, you must be born again. And that simply means you receive Jesus into your heart and life as your Lord and your Savior. And when you do that, He comes into your life, he washes you, he cleanses you, he gives you a brand new life. Or maybe you're here today and you did pray that prayer, but over a period of time, you've walked away from God and you're not serving God the way that you should. I want to pray for you too, please. If you fit into either one of those two categories, Please just slip your hand up right where you are sitting. Just raise your hand. Let me see it. I'm going to pray for you right now. God bless you. Come on, just slip it up if that's you today. Bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I was preaching in London, and I gave the altar call, and one young boy came down to the front walking. And the Lord said to me, if you came to England just for him, it's worth it. It's worth it to me. Amen. Let's give the Lord a shout and a praise. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank you that you are who you say you are. Thank you for that shot of adrenaline of faith, Father God, to keep us going boldly into the future in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to take uh, this moment um, to call up Pastor Ray. Uh, Mrs. McCauley, um, Pastor Joshua, Pastor Tara, and their children. Um, And on Mama Zelda's request, I'd like to call up Ausbasitsana Kumalo, Le Auspatients Mlengana, to come stand alongside her. Please come up. We are now going to lay hands. Pastor Ray is going to anoint Tara, Pastor Tara and Pastor Joshua um, with anointing oil. Pastor Josh and Pastor Tara are going to kneel.
can just pray in the spirit quietly wherever you are. your hands towards them please and father we just confirm what's been said today we thank you father that you've equipped them you've called them you've blessed them and that this this ministry and all the other churches that relate to us and the redemption church we just thank you father for anointing and blessing them that lord you'll use them in a wonderful way We thank you that from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet, they will be blessed and I anoint them right now in Jesus' name. It's God who appoints, it's God who anoints, nobody else. All we do is confirm it. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Love you and appreciate you. Thank you. Short, I'm short. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Where's Hayley? Oh, yeah, yeah, she's right here. Is she here? Oh, there she is with her little one. Oh, bless him, Lord. What a blessing, man. Look at that. Just show the congregation what a beautiful girl you got with the cheeks. <laughs> a beautiful family. Hey, Josh, you're anointed and you're blessed, and the best is still to come. Thank you. Thank you. Bless you guys. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me a great privilege and honor to introduce to you our incoming senior pastors. Pastor Joshua and Pastor Tara McCauley. Give the Lord a shout and a praise for this moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Um, Tara and I are just going to say something very short. And um, uh, first and foremost, Dad, I want to thank you and Zelda for this great honor today of standing here in your pulpit that has changed the world. And we are so blessed by this moment and so honored and so touched that we would be anointed and appointed to walk out this legacy. And I wanted to say to Rhema Church and the leadership, um, thank you for your trust and your support and your prayers. I also wanna thank um, our church, Redemption Church, for allowing us now to be shared and allowing us to be here more than there, given the fact that we are together. And I just wanted to say that if I can think and reflect very briefly on what my dad's leadership in this church has stood for, it has stood for leading with conviction, never deviating from the word of God, even when it conflicted with the opinions of man and the governments of age. This is not shoes to be filled, but a legacy to be followed. A legacy of serving Jesus, preaching the gospel and winning souls and building his church. I'll never forget when I was young, I used to say to my dad, is what you do telling people about Jesus? Is that what you get paid to do? Is that what we do? And my dad said, it's not what we do, it's who we are. And when I look at my children and I see how Jonathan always wants to tell people about Jesus, whenever we travel, he wants to sit on the chair next to the stranger. And Joel recently been asking me how to preach a sermon because he wants to study it. I think that 
This is in our DNA. It's not what we do, but it's who we are. And today, we can honor the past knowing that God celebrates all that He has done through you in this church. But I also know I can never replicate the past. What we can do, Tara and I, by the power of God, is dream together with the Lord to create a future. Generation to generation, for the glory of Jesus. In Joshua chapter one, verses five through seven, it says, in the same way I was with Moses, I will be with you. I won't give up on you. I won't leave you. Strength and courage. You're going to lead this people to inherit the land I promised to them. Give it everything you have, heart and soul. I also wanna say thanks to my beautiful wife who has said yes to the most crazy calling and our family, our kids were saying yes and allowing us to say yes to this. I believe just as this church lost members by deciding not to flow with the apartheid, lost influence by saying no to a law that was imposed against the Word of God, but gained the anointing by standing on the Word of God despite what was happening in the land. We can do the same, knowing that in the future it might not be popular to believe the Word of God. It may not even be the law to believe the Word of God, but that we will see every pulpit under this ministry preach the gospel of Jesus without compromise and shame. Babe, what would you like to say? Amen. I, I just wanted to honor you guys as well. Pastor Ray Zalda, thank you for believing in us. Thank you for trusting us. Thank you for who you are. Thank you, Zalda, for loving us. You don't just love. You love us like your own. And we feel like we're your children. And my kids feel like you're their granny. And we wouldn't have got to this moment if you didn't back it and you weren't cheering it on. So I really, I really honor you for that. And I say thank you. Thank you. And Pastor Ray. And Pastor Ray. I grew up in this church since I was seven years old. I'm going to cry. <laughs> I don't think we can get through this with not crying. <laughs> but I got saved in this house under your ministry. I was filled in the spirit in this house. And I just love you. I appreciate you. I'm so grateful for your ministry. Um, my family immigrated back to Ireland when I was 13. And when we moved back, we were so homesick for this church. There was, there's, once you've been in this church, there's no other church that can do. And we were sitting in Northern Ireland when I was about 13, 14. Me and my mom were missing Rayma, we were missing it. And we heard Kenneth Copeland was coming to Northern Ireland, Belfast, little Northern Ireland. And I'm like, we remember him from Rayma, let's go. And we sat there being homesick, I can't remember what he preached. All I remember is that he stopped the service. And he said, if you are here today and your church is in Johannesburg, you get back there in Belfast. And I'm like, thank you, Jesus. That's me. That's my cue. I'm going home. And I came back here at a very young age to go to Bible school and just be a part of this church again. And, and I really believe it's a part of this moment. And I believe our destiny is connected to the church God's planted us in. And God has planted us here. And this moment, we just give God all the glory and the praise. And it's amazing just to see that Kenneth Copeland was the same pastor that dedicated Josh when he was a little baby, speaking over him. And then years later, he's telling his wife, go back there. <laughs> so God knows the beginning to the end. and. We just give them all the glory. And I just want to honor my children as well because 
they do it with us. We don't say yes to things and they get left behind. They come with us because they, they witness the warfare in what you say yes to. They experience the sacrifice of what we say yes to. And I just want to honor you, kiddos. Hannah, down there, I love you, my babies. And God's hand is upon your life. And, and this is even the next generation being raised and mighty leaders. I wanted to say, um, Dad, I was just thinking about you. Um, the, and, I, oh yeah, the, and Chrissy as well on the front row. It's... it's um, it's a special moment for me to think about what would I say if I thought of you? And I know that um, what I love about the Word of God is it says Jesus is our perfect servant. And when God looks down upon us, He's not looking for perfection. He's looking for faithfulness. And I believe my dad is an example of faithfulness, that he has been faithful, whether he's healthy, whether he's not so healthy, whether he is feeling up, feeling down, whether people are cheering him on or chasing him down, the bottom line is he's been faithful to preach the gospel every single week, ever since he was called and see people get saved. And so we honor your faithfulness today, Dad. And we, we have some gifts from us to you that we wanted to give you, but I, it's okay, we'll get it to you in the... Have you got it there, Jono? Oh, it's all right. It's just some packages, yes. And then we, come on, kids, quickly, quickly. For you and Zelda, Taryn, I just had some gifts for you. That's, there we go, and Jolie, give that to Gaga. Okay, all righty. They, they were insistent they had to give it to you on the stage. Okay, can we pray over the both of you today? Is that okay? Can you stretch out your hands today? Let's put this down. I'll take this away. Thanks, Ray. You want to sit down, Dad? Let's... Thank you. Father God, we thank you today, Lord Jesus, for this incredible gift that you have given us. And we thank you, Lord, that you are so proud, so proud of your son and daughter today, how they care for your gospel, your people, this calling. We bless them with long life, health and strength. May this next season be one where they reap such a harvest, a harvest seeing the legacy continue, a harvest seeing all the people that they have blessed and sowed into returning that, serving this vision, serving them, praying for them, blessing them. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you that their reward is so great in heaven. Truly, they are good and faithful servants of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Upon this rock, I will build my church. placed us in a position to fulfill purposes and plans of God completely. Thus saith the Lord, Surely I've seen the travail of my people, and I've seen their hunger and their cry out of the darkness. But tradition that was instigated by the enemy has caught their hearts and their minds and bound them up in a blindness they have not been able to see out of. But know this, my son, I have raised you up for this hour and for this task. I have planted in you the desire to do my will, and there shall be a rustling in that land. There shall be an awakening in that land. There shall be a coming together in that land, and the whole world shall look to that area where there has been strife between black and white, and it seems so impossible that nothing could ever bridge the gap. But know this.
this, my son, that I have set thee a watchman upon the wall, and you shall stand in the gap, and make up the heads, and you shall bind the broken heart, and you shall bring together that land that is barren of my spirit, and all shall know that my hand is upon you for good, and the world should look to you and to that nation as an example when they shall see the love that shall flow from black to white and white to black until black and white shall be swallowed up and there shall be but one color and it shall be the color of my spirit saith the Lord you did not choose me but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatever you ask the father in my name he may give you. In 1977, Pastor Ed said, look, no pressure, we're opening at the Constantia Cinema, because at that stage they hadn't opened a church at all. From the Constantia, they then moved to the Coliseum in 1980. That was a big cinema in Joburg at the time, doesn't exist anymore. Then from the Coliseum, um, Pastor Ray had met a guy called Tony Factor, who was head of downtown. It was a big um, furniture warehouse, and that was in 1982. Then we were there for, uh, for the time until this property on our so the existing site was bought. I remember coming to the dedication of the building in 1984 with Pastor Reinhard Bonker. The Lord said to me that Rema, the Rema ministry here, and that this very building that is coming to be built here is going to be the nest of the divine eagle. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, and in your book they were all written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. We saw that the church needed to confront the social systems which existed, and we needed to make a declaration that apartheid was not only wrong, was not only unworkable, but it was in fact, theologically, it was sin. We were so aware of the apartheid system that existed. And then to be faced with this flag that grieved me, and I could only imagine how much more it grieved members of our congregation. Um, and of course, we're talking about the old South African flag. Um, and we started conversations with um, Pastor Ray. The very next Sunday, there were no flags. Pastor Ray had to put up with a lot of complaints, but he stood his ground, which I really appreciated the fearlessness of his convictions um, to say, no, this is wrong and we will not have that flag. Don't forget, light will always defeat darkness. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Oh, that's it, Lord. Today, the 16th of June, the opening of the new Rama Church.
over 1 million salvations to date. Over 7,000 sermons preached. Over 200 churches planted. to the Macaulay household was an interesting journey, a great honor, but something that came with a lot of expectation and responsibility. I had the honor and privilege of watching my dad build one of the most significant churches on the earth, but also myself, I was scared of the fact that what would happen one day if I was looked to to lead. So I ran a lot from being involved in church. It wasn't until I had a divine encounter with God where he spoke to me significantly to come back to the church and get involved because I was called. We started to lead those services and serving my dad under his vision at Rhema Church. I was at a conference in 2013 at Rhema. The room was full. God spoke so clearly to me and said, I want you to go to the other side of Johannesburg and start a church called Redemption. I'll never forget my dad laid his hands on myself and Tara in a service at Rhema Church. And in fact, when we launched Redemption Church with my dad's blessing, a couple of months later, he came out and there was only a handful of us, maybe 30 people in the room that decided to start Redemption Church with us. And my dad shared and prayed over us. And by the grace of God, we saw God do something supernatural. And so we began to faithfully preach Jesus from that day. And we saw Redemption Church grow miraculously ended up moving to a nightclub called Scarlet Ribbon because that was the only place that was prepared to rent us a venue on a Sunday morning. And in this nightclub in the basement of a shopping center, God drew people week upon week, week upon week. And we saw the church grow where we had more than three services on a Sunday and we were overflowing with people. Redemption Church, you're in a greenhouse. And, and there is coming a time, very, very soon, when you are going to be taken out of the greenhouse and the world is going to be amazed about what God has been growing in this place. I feel like it's, there's been a release. So, if you want to be a part of a ministry that changes, changes the world for a lot of people, you're in the right place. And I feel like God has actually now, He's released it. I'll never forget saying, God, we have no budget, we have no building, we have no crowds. And God said to me, well, what do you have? And I said, all we have is the gospel. And God said to me, build it on the gospel. I believe God has a wonderful plan for Redemption Church that will far exceed anything you can ever conceive or imagine. I see Redemption Church as an end time church. There'll be a storehouse for the Benjamin generation. A church that will have five times more food, five times more anointing, and five times more abundance than any generation that has gone before. Joshua, you are somebody that God has endued with wisdom and anointing beyond your years. I'm always amazed at your God-given ability to impact the generals of God with this gospel of grace. Tara, you're a beautiful woman that God has put alongside Joshua. The Lord's going to use you to impact the women of this generation with the message He's given you. And to everyone in Redemption Church, you are part of something great and powerful that God is doing, not just in South Africa, but all over the world. Love your pastors, support them, and live to glorify one name, Jesus. God is a 
multi-generational God and his heart is for the gospel to be preached from generation to generation. I believe God's timing for succession is here. In this transition, we commit to honor the past by giving thanks to the Lord for all he has done in the past 40 years. Pledge our loyalty to the future, believing that the best is yet to come in Jesus' name. It's interesting to note that we do not know of one church that made a transition like we are going to make in South Africa. We again are going to lead. And I believe that out of this, hundreds of churches will be able to sit, see the example and be able to get the churches to transition. And so, today marks a significant moment in our church as we honor the past and pledge our loyalty to the future. We congratulate Pastor Joshua and Pastor Tara McCauley as our new senior pastors and celebrate our founding pastor, Pastor Ray McCauley. In the same way I was with Moses, I will be with you. I won't give up on you. I won't leave you. Strength, courage. You are going to lead this people to inherit the land that I promised to give their ancestors. Give it everything you have, heart and soul. Dear Rema Church, Wendy and I celebrate with you as you mark this momentous transition, honoring the incredible leadership of Pastor Ray McCauley while receiving your incoming senior pastors, Pastors Joshua and Tara McCauley. Joshua, I look forward to seeing you lead this new generation together with Tara. You know, whenever I preach about the Benjamin generation, I always think of you because I see you as one of the foremost leaders of this generation, which I believe is the final generation before our heavenly Joseph returns. I believe that the Lord is positioning you, elevating you, and putting you in a place so that you can lead many pastors and leaders that the Lord is raising up to preach grace around the world. And when God lights a candle, He does not hide it under a bushel but he puts it on a candlestick so that it will give light to many. You will not be hidden, Joshua. Instead, the Lord will use you to maximize the impact and influence of the gospel of grace. I believe he'll promote you and increase you for the purposes of this gospel. And Tara, I see a teaching gift in you. The Lord is getting ready to use that gift in an even greater measure. So be strong and very courageous as you allow him to use you more and more, I declare that you'll be a great blessing to multitudes. And the Lord thinks in terms of generations. And when he commissioned Pastor Ray to start Rema Church over 40 years ago, I believe God already had in mind the end times prior to the coming of his son. And I believe God already saw you, Joshua, and all that has happened was to cause Rema Church to be established as a lighthouse, not just to South Africa, but to the whole world in these last days. That's the legacy that Pastor Ray has deposited for this generation, a church that was planted for such a time as this. Pastor Ray, I believe that your best days are still ahead of you. I really believe that. They are not behind you. They are ahead of you. May the Lord reward you richly for the years that you have poured into building up the body of Christ. The Lord has used you so mightily. And under your leadership, Rema Church has become one of the most influential churches in the world. You're not just a pastor, but you're a great man of God with a powerful apostolic anointing. You're a general of the faith, and I honor 
and esteem you highly. Now, as you pass your mantle of leadership to Joshua and Tara, I have no doubt that the Lord is going to bring Rema Church from glory to an even greater glory, declaring that both Rema Church and Redemption Church will experience an unprecedented outpouring of the power of the Holy Spirit as you step into this new season. In Jesus' name, Amen. Dear Pastor Ray and Zelda, together with the congregation at Rema, I'd love to greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. On this very important day, this succession day, I'm thinking as I reflect on the short journey, and it looks so short in the light of how quickly time goes, when I had the privilege to serve at Rhema when I was in Bible school way back in 1981 and 1982, serving in the mailing room, serving at Rhema there, and uh, had the privilege to see how ministry is done, to learn from you, Pastor Ray. Having watched you lead us and lead the body of Christ through the many different seasons that the body of Christ has gone through in our country, holding on the torch of the gospel, never compromising in preaching, in teaching, always being there, pioneering things, leading how we learned about mega churches, church growth, moving in the anointing, operating in the gifts of the Spirit. Some of us, we coming from Soweto, you know, watching how God uses you and God used you God inspired that even in Soweto we can see God raise mega churches and effective churches. Even today as we have shared this journey and have continued to be connected with you, we do want to bring a word of gratitude and thanks to you for how you have continued to serve God and how you've really inspired our lives. I just wonder where some of us would be in ministry, Pastor Ray, had it not been because of you and because of your service. And what a servant of God you are, in the way you've carried yourself, in the way you have run things in the ministry. And this day has come. And therefore, I do want to thank you, Pastor Ray, for the example that you are to us, and the example that you've been even in these times when you've had to deal with so much in terms of your health and the reality of having to continue in ministry to Pastor Joshua and Pastor Tara Macaulay. I just pray that God will guide you and lead you and that the lessons from Pastor Ray, the things he's used to live by, the principles he's lived by, I pray that these are the same principles that you will embrace, that the broader body of Christ that he has continued to relate with and be connected to, that you will be connected in the same way. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, Rayma Church. What a joy, what an honor it is for me to send this congratulations and our love and our complete support as you celebrate this monumental day where Pastor Joshua and Tara step into the role of senior pastors at Rayma. You know, it's been my joy to be close friends with your pastors, Ray and Zelda, for decades. And it's been my great blessing to have spoken at your church who knows how many times. You know, I've been to your nation over 50 times over the last several years. It is truly my second home from here in El Paso. So today I think about, and Joshua, I want to just say to you today, this is a day that your dad and I have talked about literally for decades. We prayed about, we counseled together about the possibility that someday you would step in and take over as senior pastor of this nation changing church. You know, I think about over the years, how many, not thousands, tens of thousands of lives have been directly impacted by the ministry of Rama and Pastor McCauley. What a joy it is now to see the next generation stepping in. Rama, God has put you in good hands. You're gonna be led with wisdom. Your pastor, your founding pastor is still gonna be there. We're gonna to work together. 
and see even a greater future. Let's remember Jeremiah 29, God has a hope and a future for us as individuals, as families, and as church families. So again, our love is with you. We believe in you, Joshua and Tara. Excited to see what God's gonna do with your life. Know that the Neiman family believes in you and we love you with all our hearts. God bless, see you soon. Greetings, everybody. What a privilege for me to be part of this succession service. Um, I'm excited to be able to celebrate First of all, the life of our dear pastor, Pastor Ray McCauley. Uh, pastor Ray, we love you so, so very much. Um, you know, when I talk about you, I always refer to you as the lion of Africa. And there's so much we can say. Even before I met you, you uh, marked my life. Um, coming and attending Rhema, uh, attending the conferences, uh, learning, growing from afar. And then having the privilege to meet you in person, Pastor, has been one of the greatest uh, privileges of my life. Uh, I have been so enriched. My family has been enriched. Our ministry has been enriched uh, from having that personal touch and, and personal relationship. In talking about succession, of course, uh, uh, Pastor Josh and Pastor Tara, oh, wow, we, uh, this is a proud moment for your dad, and uh, of course, it's a proud moment for us as well. And I think about Psalm chapter 112, and I, I want to just drop this in your spirit. It says, blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. That man is blessed. It says there that his descendants, and remember that's our heart, his descendants will be mighty on the earth. See, blessing is not about us but blessing is about our descendants, about our flock. And surely the Bible says he will never ever be shaken because even in the midst of these storms, we know God is in control. We don't have control, God's in control. And I wanna speak it over you, Pastor Josh and Pastor Tara. The anointing of God is upon you. God is with you, God will lead you, God will guide you. And when the attacks come your way, you rest in God, the author and the finisher of your faith. And from Shanae and I, our family, our ministry, we, we, we want to say congratulations. Congratulations, Pastor Ray. And then congratulations, Pastor Josh, Pastor Tara. We love you. God bless you. Hello to all of our friends at Rhema. We want to tell you how much we love yes. you. Pastor Ray, you've been a friend of our families for many, many years. Somebody that we love and respect. You always bring a smile to my face. I'm so excited to just congratulate you, Josh and Tara taking the ministry, stepping into new levels of leadership. I believe you're gonna see God's goodness and favor in ways you've never dreamed. I saw it when I took over from my father, so I just speak those blessings and favor into you and, and Tara and what God's put in your heart. From generation to generation, you're gonna tell of God's goodness. And I really believe each, God wants each generation to increase. So let's take the limits off. Who knows what God is gonna do with Rhema Church. Y'all already touched the world, but I believe y'all can do it even in a greater way. Congratulations to you all. We love you very much. Yes, we do. And we know that you're well prepared for what God has assigned for you to do. And I know his hand is upon you. We will be praying for you because we know what it's like to just start and feel like, oh my goodness, here we go. But we know that, you know what, God's right there with you. Your father's prepared you. Boy, we love you guys. It is amazing in South Africa. We never will forget the time we came out to see you. We hope that we get to come out and see you, John and Tara as well. So God bless you and have a have just a great time today. Hi Ray and Zelda, Joshua and Tara. It's Uncle Rick here in San Antonio, Texas. Congratulations on this historic occasion. First Ray, may I say thank you for investing in me over 30 years ago. Your love and friendship made me a better man and a much better leader. I think of Rabbi Kushner who said, when you finish life, the things that give you the greatest joy are the victories other people had because you came alongside and partnered with them. Thanks, Ray, for the many victories that have come in my life, primarily because you came into my life. We are friends forever. And to Joshua and Tara, 
Can Uncle Rick give you a blessing? Just bow your head. Heavenly Father, I pray your eternal blessing upon Josh and Tara. Give them the wisdom of Solomon in leading this great congregation. May their ministry be continually refreshed with the Holy Spirit's anointing. May Josh and Tara's presence in this city and nation be salt and light. Bless the great congregation of Rama Church with faithfulness to the Word of God, loyalty to their pastors, love for one another, and a heart for the lost and broken lives that will enter this church. Josh and Tara, may you prosper. May you be in health. May the Lord's favor shine upon you going out and coming in. Even as your souls prospers, may the Lord give you increased elevation, impact in your community and in your nation. And may the Lord make you a blessing to all who come into the sphere of your life. I bless you now with the favor of God. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you guys. Bless you. Hello, I'm Creflo Dollar, Senior Pastor of World Changers Church International right here in College Park, Georgia, USA. And it is an honor and a privilege indeed to be a part of this amazing season in the life of Rama Church, Pastor Ray McCauley, Pastor Joshua and, and, and Tara. We are, we're just glad to be a part of this. You know, uh, Ray, you and I go way back almost 40 years and you have been a, an amazing force in South Africa. You are a man whom this world didn't even deserve. You have changed the face of South Africa. You were bold enough to stand up against apartheid. You were bold enough to stand on God's word you were bold enough to, to believe God to take you through an operation that no other person on the earth survived. And my friend, I am glad to say to you that you are highly loved and greatly appreciated by the Dollar Household and World Changes Church International. God bless you, my friend. I'll never forget the time where we went to Sun City and I won't tell nobody about that. <laughs> Praise God, we had a great time. I love you, man. I appreciate you. Josh, you and your, your lovely wife, listen to me. If I can give any advice about the season that you guys are in right now, it would be this. Don't let anybody rob you of your peace. And any, there's drama going on around the world, drama going on in churches, drama going on in families. And if it costs you your peace, then it's too expensive. Guard your peace. Hold on to your peace. Don't allow your peace to be spent on somebody else's drama. Trust God. Rely on Him. Depend on Him. And everything will be all right. Please understand this one thing. The best is yet to come. The best is on its way. The best God has reserved for a time such as this. And although I remember when you were a little boy coming in the house asking your daddy to help you out because you failed and, and hurt your knee, you're a grown man now. You're a man of God, a man of faith, a man of grace. I congratulate you. I love you. I love this family. You guys are part of me and Taffy and I, we are a part of you. God bless you. I thank God for this season. I want to ask the whole church, get behind what's happening right now because amazing things are taking place in Johannesburg, South Africa, Rama Church. Pastor Ray, my buddy, God bless you, man. I love you and Zelda. I love all that God is doing in these final and last days. All is well at Rama Church. God bless you and we'll see you soon. Should I feel discouraged? And why do the shadows come? Why does my heart 
feel lonely Longing for heaven and home When Jesus is my portion My constant friend is he His eyes on the sparrow And I know he watches me His eyes on the sparrow And I know he watches me And I sing Because I'm happy And I sing